Hey, what's up guys? Murray Torn and welcome back to Crusader Kings 3 Legends of the Dead. So in today's episode, we are going to try and declare war on Georgia. However, there's a couple things that I didn't consider. So first of all, I did not notice that they are no longer allied with the Byzantine Empire. Instead, they're just allied with this duke over here who's not very powerful. So we didn't really need to wait for the 750 prestige. We could pull the Seljuk uh, Ember in. So that wasn't uh, even necessary. However, we actually can't declare war on this guy using the Conquer Duchy because that requires the illustrious fame level, which we do not have just yet. So in order to use this particular war goal, we'd have to wait. However, there's another option. We could do a holy war for that same duchy, and that only requires 260 piety. We don't have that either though, so we would have to wait for the piety level. Another thing we can try and do this episode is a funeral. We have a body that we can, that we can bury. We'd probably do it here in our capital. And the deceased is our uncle. Remember, he died last episode. So we could bury him, but you'll see it costs a little bit too much, and that's just with the mid-level. Now, you can do the low-level, but well, that's too expensive as well. And this controls how much piety you get, legitimacy, and how much stress you lose. We can spend as much as 178 for the best, best bonuses by doing uh, a very extravagant ceremony. Now, obviously, this is... Not an option just yet, we don't have the money. So basically we're limited for some reason in regards to just about everything, either money, our uh, fame level, or our current piety. Now we do have an open tax collector position. And it's just a bunch of average characters here, so we'll just go ahead and put this guy in it. And we lost that hook, nothing we could have done with that. Let me just see if there's anything in here we need to be aware of. Uh, the hook on our wife will expire soon. Uh, that was from that romance event chain. We could try and demand her conversion, because she's orthodox. That'll allow us to use that, that hook. So let's go ahead and do that. We get a 100% chance that we'll be successful here. So the Seljuk Sultan is contacting us, our friend and father-in-law. He says, I think it might be in the best interest of our realms to arrange a meeting between our heirs, making sure that they build a stable and healthy relationship. Now, that would certainly ensure the future stability of our lands. We could say, what a delightful idea. This is a chance to get a diplomacy lifestyle perk. Or perhaps we should get better acquainted instead, which I don't think is really necessary because we're already really good friends. Yeah, we'll go with that. And maybe these uh, two heirs will have a blooming friendship. So as far as our options, what we can say here, so we can have the prince come to our territory, and then it'll cost us money that we don't have. Or instead, we can have Manu go to his territory, but we won't be able to influence the meeting. But we do get 150 renown for that. Well, we don't really have the money for this. Yeah, let's just go with this and hope everything goes well. We are putting our heir into the Seljuk's hands, but he is our friend, so I feel like we should be able to trust him, right? And we have another spare heir, several of them in fact, if anything was to happen. So Manu who has finally returned after his visit that did not pay, take very long. In accordance with his illustrious rank, he was showered with luxurious presents during his stay. Things between him and Manu went as good as the Sultan and I had hoped. The two young heirs will hopefully become good friends, good friends in time. What is more, the visit proved to be an excellent opportunity to refine my diplomatic skills. Alright, so we did get some diplomacy lifestyle experience. And the prince actually paid us money. And Manu increased his opinion of the uh, the next heir of the Seljuks. All right, so we now have the money to do the mid-range of those funerals. In fact, I think we're pretty close to being able to do the high range if we wanted to. I was going to have him buried in the capital, because that would make sense. But you'll notice that because these locations have a temple... We'll get more piety, stress loss, and legitimacy. So it'd be actually better to bury him in one of those locations. He is just our uncle as well. It's not like he's our son or something. We're going to visit his uh, grave all the time. I don't know how close we were to our uncle. It seemed not that close at all. Honestly, I didn't even know who he was until we gave him that title. Uh, so yeah, we'll go ahead and put him here to get the extra bonuses. I think that's a bit closer to where his territory was anyway. I don't remember what we handed him. I think it was one of these territories over here. So it's a little bit closer. That does require us to travel there. We do not yet have a caravan master. 
We'd have to hire one. Because uh, our only choice here is the court position, which I don't really want to put them into that. So we'd have to look for one. Okay, well, that's fine. We'll go ahead and do that. Uh, we should have enough money. So let's send for a caravan master. You never know, maybe it'll be somebody decent who could serve us as a knight as well. Uh, so they both have decent aptitude. He's excellent. Well, he's good. I'm just going to pay a bit more for the better one. Uh, but just taking a look at their other skills here, because you never know what other roles they could perform for us. Both have pretty good attributes overall. I think Ali is probably a bit better, which is why he's a more excellent choice. He's also a better knight. He is sadistic, though, so that's one thing to consider. They're both Persian. Well, yeah, it'll save some money if you go with Farouk. But I prefer to have the better knight, so let's go with Ali. That's the way we'll look at it, is we're hiring a knight in, in addition to a caravan master. So let's go and do this activity now, the funeral. Again, we'll put it in that same location there. And we're not going to do any travel options. Deceased is our uncle. And our purpose is probably to mourn so that we can lose some of the stress. So we'll keep it as is. And uh, we're just going to go with the mid-ranking one. I don't really feel like our uncle, again, that we were close enough to do the uh, the extravagant ceremony. So we'll just do the dignified. And frankly, I don't want to spend... Well, we, we wouldn't have had enough money for that anyways. But yeah, I wouldn't want to spend that much on this funeral. Alright, so this is going to be his final resting place. And I'm left alone to gather my thoughts and prepare for the arrival of the honored mourners. So that gets us at 25 prestige. Uh, making amends. It's another event between these two here. And again, it's telling us that they're putting their petty dispute aside. We'll see if that's actually true. Because uh, only time will tell whether the spare embers might light this fire once more. Look we'll at that 75 prestige. Oh, they're becoming friends. Well, in that case, we should no longer have these issues. Also, house unity is increasing. So, nice little advantage uh, from that. But yeah, with them being friends, you'd expect we wouldn't get any more of those negative events. Uh, so this is the next trait for Arzalan, which he is doing that diplomacy education. And he's got the Craven, which really isn't good for anything, honestly. I mean, I, I guess you get more intrigue, but yeah, we don't want to, to have him be a Craven. Could have him be shy, but that's not good for somebody who's doing a diplomacy focus. Or we can instead have him be paranoid, which also isn't good for, for diplomacy, but I suppose it's better from either than either one of these. So yeah, we'll have him do this one. He'll be paranoid. It does result in us getting more stress. And also, our doctor just died. Well, how did he die? Mysterious circumstances. Somebody took him out. Well, that's unfortunate. So now we gotta to find another doctor. Might have somebody in our court. I feel like I've seen some that had the doctor trait. Uh, we got an event here from the funeral. All eyes fall upon Guzadum as he falls to the ground in lamentation, hands coating his reddened eyes from view. His sorrowful ga uh, gasps and chokes have left his fellow mourners breathless, and many offer him comfort and reverence as if it were him who has to be committed to the hereafter. So our brother is making a big deal about this. Maybe he's a little closer to our uncle than we were. So we can say, eyes must fall upon only me. This is a learning and prowess challenge, only a 20% chance of success, and this will gain us piety and legitimacy, but more than likely we will in fact lose both of those. And we could form a rivalry with our half-brother. Instead we could go with, I can only mourn in my own way. That's a nice piety increase. We'll also lose 33 stress. Or offer him comfort. So we'll lose the stress, be closer to form a friendship with him, but won't get all that nice piety. So that's one we're to go with. I can only mourn in my own way. I think it fits our character the best too. The mourners move through the hall weeping in a kind of macabre dance. I think the British pronounce that macabre. And this is all for Mamlin. The unsettling silence of a people holding back what they so desperately wish to do. Silent screams never depart their lips. Hard fought battles against tears being lost. So ashamed of their own grief. I rise to my feet and allow myself to get lost in the dance with my fellow mourners. And so I must remain strong. That's going to give us more piety. And we'll lose some stress. So we're getting very nice bonuses from this to piety and the stress relief. The sorrowful line marches on. The line to have a last moment with Mamlin. A last whisper. A last long goodbye. A last nothing at the last place anyone will see him again. 
That's a lot of the word last in one sentence, uh, but truly it is a privilege to be here. The line brings me ever closer until, at last, the figure in front of me parts, and there's nothing but a veil between me and him. So we could do a quiet bow and then part. This will get us a lot of piety, but would actually cause some stress. We can make a speech promising to rule in his honor. This is a diplomacy challenge with a 81% chance of success, and that would give us that legitimacy. Or we could speak of his virtues, and we'll just get some opinion with everybody who's at the funeral. Who's all at this funeral, anyway? Okay, it looks like a lot of our vassals, our family, of course. Pretty much the people who are related with them. I think we should try the, the speech diplomacy challenge. You know, that is our specialty. We have the good diplomacy, so it seems like something our character would do, and that's a good chance to get a bit of legitimacy. Even though I would like more height, it's a little bit more useful, but uh, the stress increase. Let's go with this option, guys. And we were successful. So we did get some more legitimacy there. I and the other mourners take a reprieve from our grief to enjoy a great bounty of food. Naib Harviz, usually the lifeblood of any feast, now sits across from me misty-eyed with an untouched goblet at his side. So this is our marshal. How can we make ourselves fat and merry in times like these? Are we to satisfy our hedonistic desires while Manlon has none? Join me. Empty your goblets, your goblets in libation. The guests seem to agree there is wisdom in Harvey's oafish lamentation. So we can criticize him for this. We'll get some piety and legitimacy, but we'll humiliate our marshal. We can instead join in the offering. That gives you the same legitimacy there, just without the piety. Say a round of drinks for all. That'll give you quite a bit more legitimacy. It'll cost us money we don't really have. Increase opinion with all the guests, though. Or we say, I will remember him my own way, and everybody will be disgusted with us, and we'll get a little less piety. Well, we get the same amount of piety as this one. These two don't give us any piety. We're going to just go ahead and join in the offering and get the legitimacy. I don't want to insult our, our marshal. All right, so I remember him. In the quiet corner of the mosque, I overhear Naib Guzadahum chatting away with a group of mourners. He somberly gestures me over. We all have fond memories of Mamlum. I was just talking about the time my uncle Mamlum died of old age. Tell me, have you any memories to share? So this is our brother. Really should be our uncle. So we can say the memories are too painful. This option is available because of our intent to mourn. We'll lose a lot of stress that we no longer really have. We only have 15 stress now. Uh, but we'll gain 100 piety. We can say, yes, I knew him well. This is an entry challenge. So apparently... We're lying, and so we're trying to convince them that we did know him well. Uh, only a 50% chance of success. You get a lot of piety, though. But yeah, we're not going to do that. Or say, I admit I have nothing. We'll go with this option. Hunched beside me, bereft of the pretense of propriety, the inconsolable Guzdahum gazes out into the nothingness before him. Not a tear falls from his eyes. Not a word passes his mouth until he turns to me. Allah can be so cruel indeed. Why does the wind still yet blow? Why does the sea continue its push to the shore? Why does my body ache for food and thirst for water? The end times is upon us. My uncle was dead. I mean, geez, was he like really close to him? Seems like he must have been. So we can say, now remember, we must not allow our grief to overwhelm us. We'll gain stress, and it's basically disrespecting our, our brother here, but we'll get some piety. You say, while there's life, there's always hope. This is a combined learning diplomacy challenge. And it's about a two-third chance we'll succeed, be closer to form a friendship, and gain some piety. Uh, or you lose piety and lose opinion with them because you'll feel insulted. Or you can just quietly nod and lose the stress. Uh, we're going to go with this. I know it's not a high chance of success, but let's just see if we make it happen. And he is comforted. All right, excellent. So you're getting a lot of piety from these funerals. Of all the figures venerated and villainous, none have been desired more than our departed Mamlin. With his crowd of weepers and gawkers finding other subjects to satisfy their fascination, I am at last left with a moment of solace between myself and my uncle. So we can use this time for a uh, quiet prayer. We'll gain both piety and stress. We can allow myself for a moment of grief. This will result in us gaining piety and losing stress. Or promise to be better. And then we'll gain stress and then get this modifier which increases the legitimacy game. Let's just go with the symbol option. Allow ourselves a moment of grief. 
So one of the greats. Before me, a feasting table stocked high with all manner of food and drink. As if Mamlum were trying to offer a final act of magnanimity before parting. Jeez, that's a word. Uh, Sharam, this is our chancellor, has so far refused to lay a finger on this banquet, however, swilling his goblet around in idle solace. His middle distance stare falls warily upon me, and with a quiet nod, he raises his drink high to Mamlum, truly one of the greats. So we can say great indeed, and I'll be greater still. Diplomacy challenge with 81% chance of success. We'll gain some legitimacy. We can instead just toast Mamlum, get the piety. Tell us what he really meant to you, and uh, we're showing him kindness, getting an opinion increase, or speak a quiet, a quiet prayer, and we'll get that same piety while also getting more stress loss, which we don't actually need here. Well, we do want more legitimacy. A piety is super helpful as well, and there's no risk with uh, these options. So yeah, we'll go with this one. No, no, we don't actually need the stress loss. The shadows of mourners no longer loom over me, and I'm at last given a moment alone. What quiet comfort I could take in such a moment without the rattling and prattling of other guests in my ears. Just me and my thoughts of Mamlin. So that'll result in more stress loss. Good God, there are a lot of events for this, aren't there? Uh, this is taking much longer than I was expecting for a, uh, a funeral of just our uncle who we barely knew. Uh, but now the time has come to commit the final rites before his final journey into the hereafter. Manlin's enshrouded body is held suspended above an open grave, surrounded by close friends and family. Stood at his head is you, a privileged place of mourning afforded only to the magnanimous host. I can only take a comfort in seeing someone so old in this state, such a long and lustrous life is the envy of many, and to be surrounded by so many mourners is all that man can hope for. At last his body is lowered into the earth, and the funeral is officially completed with a prayer. So this gets you a lot of legitimacy and piety, and you also lose more stress. So yeah, a lot of a uh, lot of good stuff you get from these, but man, they're really they're really long. I don't know if we'll read through all those. We went through it once, and it seems that our marshal got us the uh, military presence here, so increased garrison size and control growth. Um, yeah, it's uh. It's a fun thing to do. I'm glad they added them. It makes sense to have them. We just got all kinds of people dying here, don't we? We had our doctor die, and now we just had... Well, actually, that's probably a good thing that we had him die. The Mufti. We now have another one appointed, but aren't we supposed to be the ones to appoint these? And yet they just keep automatically appointing them. But I thought that was going to be our role here. I thought that that had happened before, like, I, I was, could have swore we had a different Mufti when we started, but maybe not. Now, he's much better, so that's good, but yeah, I thought that this was uh, something we do, that we can appoint them, we just can't fire or reassign them. Yeah, apparently that's not the case, because it will not allow me to, to appoint these guys. At least we got a really good Mufti this time, and we did finish converting here, apparently. Yep, so now we need to move him. I don't know if I just missed the notification for that. Uh, where do we want to move them over to? Probably should get rid of the orthodox locations first. I think that makes the most sense. So we'll do it over here. Get that area converted. It's going to take them five years to do that. We do need to hire a doctor still. We're going to have to wait to do that because we don't really have much money at the moment. But yeah, when it comes to the, the funerals, I'm glad that they added them. There's a lot of events for him, and it comes across a little strange when it's a character you didn't really actually know all that well or care about, like that that uncle there. I mean, it was still our choice to do the funeral. We didn't have to, but yeah, we didn't really uh, we didn't really even know him that well. Now we're gonna go get the the friend. So yeah, it just kind of came across as strange. There should have been like a notification, like more awareness, I mean. Oh, our wife is pregnant again. That it, we weren't really close to him. There was that one event where we'd have to lie to have said that we were close to him, but yeah, just overall it felt, it felt a little strange. All right, so we got this event again. Seems that this is always happening between your tax collectors and your steward. Now, at least it's a different character now that he's made friends with that other tax collector, but yeah, now it's just this guy that's, that's going to be causing issues now. Okay, so... We can go with this option 
to reduce the taxes, increase the development growth like we did last time, and not cause any problems with the house unity. So I guess that's what we'll do. Support our son in this. And another character over here died. We have the marriage alliance with. That faction disbanded too. Uh, we do have the piety now to declare war. Uh, we have a ton of prestige as well for that. We need to hire a doctor though before we do anything. So let's go ahead and get the search for a physician started. Then we'll have to hire him. That'll cost a good little chunk of money and then we'll need to raise a little bit more for a bit of a war chest here. Uh, so we've got two choices here. One's good, one's terrible. Seems to be a uh, choice is obvious. So we're going to go with him. Get him hired. And then we'll just earn a little bit of money here. And I guess we'll also have our son be born. Okay, he looks kind of small to me. I know he's just born, but uh, looks smaller than our other sons were. Of course, he doesn't look like a newborn. And let's name him Musa. Sure, we'll do that. Let's try to have different names for all of our sons. Our vassal Mamum, who's our spy master, is offering us one of his servants to take the place of Georgios, one of our tax collectors, who's not very good. And so we could do that. With these events, I'm always thinking, and it's often with a character who uh, is more intrigue focused, that they're trying to get somebody in your court that can operate as an agent. I don't know if that's always the case, but I always just suspect it is. And we actually have a really good option here to just get a strong hook on him. He'll be loyal to us, so he won't be able to operate against us. That's far better. So we'll say, you may keep your servant, your loyalty is enough. The other option would have been this one to just instead uh, try and increase Giorgio's skill, his stewardship, but he'll get uh, 100 stress, go to a critical level. So you don't even know what you'd uh, get from that. The stress trait might end up reducing that stewardship even more. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna go with this. this is clearly the, the better option. So now our spy master is loyal to us. And it's always great to have a spy master whose loyalty is ensured. Uh, our sons are learning different languages here, Arabic in that particular case. We have not really worked on learning any other languages ourselves. So I don't know if there's any point on self-improvement now. We're at uh, you know, an older age in our life. Uh, we did get that great burial site. All right, excellent. So that's been constructed in the capital. And so now it's just a matter of upgrading. We've filled out all the building slots in the capital. So you can upgrade those those other ones we have uh, or construct in other locations, though we're not entirely sure what we'll be able to keep and what will be inherited by other sons rather than our primary heir. Uh, these two are now rivals, so that went even worse than the last conflict between uh, our son and the tax collectors. They at least became friends in the end, but it seems that's not going to be the case with this rivalry. So I'm happily soaking in the bathhouse, sharing deep reflections and salacious jokes with Guzadahem, our brother. As I feel all tensions leave my body, I realize that it's not just the warm water loosening my muscles. I'm genuinely having fun, and it's all because of his company. Until we discovered our common passion for bathhouses, we hadn't had any chance to really interact or get to know each other that well. Now I really look forward to our regular rendezvous here, as they are always filled with laughter and merriment, and we truly become friends. So indeed, a toast to him, and this is uh, resulting us finally become friends with them. We've had a few different occasions where we've been uh, making that more likely. And our son learned language as well. Is he the one that our wife is? No, no, this is the one that uh, our spy master is actually tutoring. And our wife helped teach in that language. So this is the next trait for our son, Arslan, and it's patient, or we can make him generous. Well, patient is good for learning. Generous is better for diplomacy. Generous is also considered a virtue. So let's go with that, we'll take the stress. And so he now has all his traits. He's 13 years old, a few more years until he's a full grown man. Oh yes, that's right. We were waiting for that money and now we can go ahead and declare war. He did raise up his truce again, so that's unfortunate. We could easily bring our ally into this conflict. He does have an additional ally now, Antioch. And we have so much prestige, I don't think it would hurt to now pull in the ally for this conflict. So we still don't have the illustrious fame, so we're going to do the Holy War to get the duchy. we got plenty of piety now. 
This does allow other Orthodox rulers to join, so that could be the Byzantine Emperor. But we're gonna pull, go ahead and pull our ally in, so it's not as much of an issue here. But we do have plenty of prestige. All right, so we'll raise our troops and go ahead and invade into his capital, which is right here on the borders, quite conveniently for us. And we'll probably let our marshal take charge. And our father-in-law did join the conflict. Now we could probably take Georgia alone, but they do have their allies and we don't know exactly who all will, will help them out here. Yeah, both of their allies, of course, came in. Doesn't seem like the Byzantine Emperor is coming though. So we're starting up with the siege here. I think we're gonna let our ally destroy his troops. Let's do the capital siege first. That might be enough to win if you capture some key people. So this is the event for Ahmed. So he also can get the diligent trait. Remember, we're trying to make him into a soldier. A diligent doesn't go against that. Could make him generous instead or patient. We're just going to let him keep the diligent. It is such a great trait to have. And his troops are over here when we need him over here. Maybe he'll just do sieges. How long until he completes his siege? Nine months when ours will be done in about the same time. So we'll complete the siege and then maybe go after him here. I could just abandon the siege and attack him while we got him in the hills and can get that bonus. But I think it's better to take the capital. Because it is so close here. Gonna, don't gotta march all the way up in this territory to see if we can't capture somebody. Unfortunately, I've been dealing with a bit of a cough over the last couple days. Not entirely sure why. We did get this court artifact that we captured. Of course, can't use that until we become a king and get our own royal courts, but it's nice to, to have that. Uh, these two stopped being rivals already. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> these events are silly. Uh, they got that money from the siege, and we were able to capture his queen. Alright, so that did not give us any war score. Despite the fact that we have his queen, that really should, you'd think. Having his wife, that seems like something you'd get war score from. But we don't, so we could just ransom her because that's 90 gold. You can get 100 if we wait a little bit, so I suppose that's what we'd want to do. But yeah, she doesn't doesn't assist us with the war score, unfortunately. It's really only the, uh, the ruler or the heirs. So did he complete his siege over here? Not yet. Okay, so maybe we finished it a little bit early. So we're gonna go and try and relieve the siege. He does have more troops. Uh, looks like our ally is gonna come assist us now. So we might wait for him to get a little closer. Uh, we also got a diplomacy perk, so we're just moving through these. So next is the confidant. Each friend adds negative five percent stress gain. I know we have at least two friends. Might have three though. Let me just double check here. We got two friends. And uh, one of them, of course, is our half-brother, who is a powerful vassal, and we don't have him on our council. I don't think there's really any positions open to him right now, though. No, not really. Unfortunate. I'd like to give him a position. Alright, so doing the attack here, we're definitely going to win that. And that's even without the assistance of our allies. We'd win that, just because of all the defensive bonuses and the terrain. Alright, so we're able to capture... Quite a few prisoners, it seems. And that battle is enough for us to, to win the conflict. Alright, so let me just take a look at the prisoners that we got. I don't think any of them... None of them are heirs or anything like that, right? No. So we don't have to ransom them now. We can go through these and see what we want to, to do with them, though. Like his wife, can we get the full... 100? No, we can't. He's actually losing money from the conflict, so we might want to hold on to her until he's got the money to pay. Same thing with this count here. Let's take a look at all the characters you got. Like, this guy might be a decent knight. He's kind of old, though, so he's only going to get worse. Well, you can't ransom him. You could just force him to convert. Let me just take a look at how bad our knights are, because I don't actually know. We've gotten a few new ones. So overall, I think they're probably better, yeah. The lowest one is an 8, so this guy's probably not worth. Uh, again, we'll just force him to convert. We can even get the weak hook on him, just because. 
So yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. And then this is a Lord Mayor, so you can't get money from him. That's full 50 gold, so we're going to ransom him off. Here's another Mayor. So we're going to get a lot, of mon no, a lot of money from these ransoms, which is historically accurate. Ransoms were a great way to earn money in, in wars. And this is just a hook. Okay. This guy is from a famous family, though. Used to be emperors here. Let me just see if there's anything else we might want to do with them. Like maybe the Vandis version instead. I mean, he could still get the weak hook. I don't see any reason to really recruit him, though. So that should be all of them except for the ones that we are waiting on money. Let's just see how our knights did. Look at the event specifically. So our brother-in-law, Prince Muhammad, he killed their mayor here. Our marshal was also successful in killing one of their knights who was retreating from battle. Okay, so we'll wait till all those ransoms are accepted here. Got those hooks. That should be everything. So let's go ahead and end the conflict now. Enforce our demands. Take over all those duchies. So that puts us four over the limit here, so we're going to have to start granting out these titles. So yeah, we got a lot of legitimacy from winning that conflict, so very close to getting to the next level now. We also got 150 devotions, since it was a holy war. Appeased our glory hound vassals. Got glory for our acclaimed knight. So yeah, overall went pretty well. Georgia is now separated from the Byzantine Empire. And this is a, a high-ranking title that we need to, to grant out. But who to grant it to? Because our younger son is still too young to take this title off our hands. I mean, we could just get it, give it to him anyways. Even though he's not... Uh, quite a man because you got to give him a title now it is going to be unfortunate for our compassionate younger son since he only has this really pathetic territory up in the north I almost feel bad for him if we were to give this to our second son let me just take a look at what happens with the succession currently yeah it's all going to younger sons because he's already been deemed to have gotten his title I'm not sure if you were to give him more titles that that would actually, uh, how that would work. Now, he does only have one son, so all of his, uh, titles would go to his son. But yeah, if you gave this to him, would that be considered part of the succession? I'd hate to grant it to him and then you still got all these other titles that need to be given out. So since I'm curious how this works, I think what we're going to do is we're going to split these titles up between these two uh, younger sons, the second and third one. And I, I want to see if this appeases their uh, their claims. Because it just says that 25% of the titles go to the other sons. So does that mean that the other sons that don't have a title, if you've already given out 25%, would just be stuck out and they wouldn't get any? I don't know. And I'm curious how it works. So let's, let's test it. And so we're going to grant something to him while also granting titles to the second son. And so we have a total of, let me just take a look here, three titles in this area here, and then this one here, which I, I believe these are all in the same, yeah, they're all in the same duchy here, or principality. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go and arrange a marriage for Arslan first. So a betrothal. can also influence his personality to be more like ours if we wanted to. I think we saw that option in the uh, last Let's Play. Uh, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and uh, find him a spouse. We'll see if there's any good alliances. I could also just kind of look around the area and see if there's any good uh, marriages that are clear to us. Like over here, perhaps. Looks like he does have a very young daughter. So he has to wait a long time to do that marriage. 
could also marry into the imperial family. I don't know how interested he would even be doing in doing that. But that would be an option too. I kind of think marrying across the Caspian Sea here would be the best choice. So let's just take a look and see if he's even willing to do this. And this would be with our second son, Arslan. He would be willing to accept that. So you don't have to do a grand wedding or anything like that. Yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. We'll send that proposal off. Let this get accepted. Does form another alliance as well. So now we're allied with him as well as with the Sultan. And so now we can grant these titles out. And what I think the best way to do this would be to give our second son the duchy title, or excuse me, the, the capital of the duchy. I don't know that we would actually get the duchy title because we don't have that and we don't want to pay for it. So we're just going to grant him this one here. And then one additional one. Maybe... Maybe this one here. So we'll get him two titles. So this way I don't think either one of them will actually be able to claim the duchy title. And I'm actually fine with that. So we'll grant those out to him and then with our second son, although we can take a look at what the succession situation is now, because again I'm kind of curious how this affects it. It seems like giving him more titles does not help us out. Okay, that's unfortunate. I wanted to see how it worked, but yeah, it wasn't the way I wanted that to go down. Okay, well now we know. I really feel like it should be, if it says 25% of the titles goes to the other sons, then I don't know. Let's go and grant him just one title then. I guess we'll have to keep this one. That we will be over the, the holding limit there, but... Yeah, we'll grant him this one. And yeah, kind of unfortunate that it goes down like that. Because yeah, now each of these sons is expected to get one. So holding on to this is probably not the best way to do it either though, because he's really young. And we did discover the battlements for our culture, excellent. So now we want to get the next innovation selected. We do have these ones available, of course they take longer, so it's probably better to finish up in here. Uh, but yeah, that will reduce our men-at-arms maintenance, which we do need to spend our troops over paying for those. I was like, why are we in the, the negative? Well, that explains it. All right, let's get the royal prerogative next. So we can get the higher crown authority. And that'll be completed in 15 years. Alright, so we can also create these duchy tiles. If we wanted to create some dukes. I like to have a bunch of counts personally, but... Yeah, we need to grant this out. Could give it to just a knight. Because I don't really want to grant it to a son this young. I mean, he's only 11. He's just a little too young, I think, to, to be given that title. And of course we can always get more titles by attacking somebody else, though the options are starting to become a bit limited. Uh, I think we'd have to attack him next. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have granted him these, these titles over here. I wanted to see how it worked though. Now we know. It doesn't matter if you assign additional titles, so you can't just like give all 25% of those titles to one other son. You'd have to spread them out. But now we know. So I wanted to see if we had any knights that we might want to, to grant a title to. And I guess we'll grant it to him. I would be hesitant to do so if he was still a rival with our our heir, but that's not the case anymore. So yeah, we're going to grant it to him. So we get back under the limit there. Do need to appoint another tax collector. And it looks like we got uh, the physician here, which would he'd be pretty good at. So we'll go ahead and put him in that place. And it seems that all of our vassals are within this one taxpayer, which is what we want for now. But I am thinking about spreading it out and creating a new tax decree here to just get some different benefits. So I'll take a look at that before next episode, see if we want to create a new jurisdiction. Uh, we can ransom the queen, but we can't get the full 100 yet, so we're going to wait to do that. We will go ahead and ally with our son. And of course, the most powerful vassals is going to be changed up now. These two are still powerful vassals. I could have gave that uh, extra title to our son as well. Though, you know, if, I suppose it's better than doing that with this guy. It doesn't fix the succession issues. 
but neither does uh, giving that out to him. Would count as one of his counties, though, so. And unfortunately, we're getting some penalties here. The smuggling ring. House unity has changed. Seems that our son, Afridun, has stirred up trouble with himself. And so unity has been decreased, as ridiculous as that is. Okay. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure what's going on there. Seems almost like it's broken a little bit in that case. Which might explain why we're just losing house unity for no reason. And it doesn't affect us, we're still at harmonious. But something to consider that it might be a little broken. Uh, we do have all that piety, so we could make use of this. And we have more landed uh, members of our, our family. Well, this is not the one where that matters, it's these two here. See, so we'd get better bonuses now than we would have. So development growth is something I'd really like to get improved. So this cost us 55 gold, it's 280 piety. I think we will go ahead and do this one. So let's go ahead and enact that. And I suppose we could even do the other one because we do have so much piety and money at the moment. Let's get you more taxes. Could wait until we had more landed members of our house, but you know, our other son's kind of young and we don't even have any titles to give out anyways. So let's go ahead and do both of those now. Give us additional uh, benefits. And I suppose we can take a look and see if there's any construction we can do here. Uh, we don't quite have enough money for the upgrade yet. Could improve the neighboring location here instead, because this would be cheaper. Let's go ahead and construct the barracks here. We're going to be changing up who's stationed here. We'll be changing up our men at arms a bit. So with the, the heavy infantry here, let's station them over here now. We'll look at... You know, we won't get quite as good of bonuses here, but the bonuses we have here are better for the cab unit. So let's place them over there. And then you just got these light footmen who just want to put into whatever place is the best, which would be over here. Okay, so I think that's pretty good. And light horsemen should get some, some nice bonuses now. And we need to improve these guys. So let's actually increase them in size once we have the money. Just gonna build up our men in arms a little bit higher. And we do actually have a dangerous faction here. Just populous. Yeah, just a populous rebellion that we're gonna have to deal with. And this county here wants independence. Wife is pregnant again. And we're getting some nice bonuses here. Well, I mean, our, our, our wife is getting the stewardship, and I want to say that that might affect us, depending on... Yeah, because we currently have her on the managed domain, so it might give us another point. And our youngest son has gotten his trait, because he has the uh, two points in diplomacy he just got. So, let's go ahead... I think we already have... Yeah, we already have a guardian here for the second youngest. So now we need a guardian for him and also to set his education up. He is curious. Okay, so learning or diplomacy. I guess we'll do another learning one. And then we need to give him a guardian. I think we got a good choice here in our Mufti. Because he's got, despite the fact that he's quite slow, uh, he's got a very good learning. So I think he'd be the, the best option. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that and also just increase his opinion with him. Though he already likes us a lot. And so this is Musa here. That boosts his opinion even more. And seems that he is just about finished up in the Converting the Faith. And there's a neighboring ruler whose opinion we increased. Also, he is offering to pay the ransom, but not enough. He's got less money than he had before. Uh, we had another daughter over here. Excellent. We'll name her after our wife. Let me just confirm we don't have... I think that's our first daughter, right? Yeah, that's actually our first daughter. These are all sons. Wow. We had a ton of sons. We'll name her after her mother. So just a matter of days before we need to move him, so that's why I'm keeping this open. A curse undone. So our rival died. Yep. So we lost a little bit of stress. Alright, so the task is finished. Let's go ahead and have him convert the next of our Orthodox. 
provinces here. So he did very good because, again, that high learning lets him enact that fairly quickly. Four years to get that one done. A murder scheme has been exposed. Somebody wants to kill Georgios. Not surprising. Uh, we've already seen some people don't like him. Our spy master, in fact, wasn't he trying to get him replaced? Uh, so Arslan has come of age. Of course, he already has titles over here now. He grew up fast, and he got the full gray eminence education trait. Now, remember, he cannot get married for some time. His betrothed is very young. And so as of right now, our eldest son would inherit any of his titles if anything happens to him. So this is the next trait for Ahmed. Remember, he's our one we're trying to make into a good soldier so far. Nothing he's gotten has been uh, helping him when it comes to like martial or prowess. So I guess none of these uh, personality traits, or most of them don't, don't help with that. But this is the greedy one. Could instead help him get just or callous. So just isn't going to help for what we're trying to make him, but that is a good trait for him to have. Uh, Callus, same deal here. I guess we'll just go with the just. Yeah, we'll do the just one. It'll be like his pops. Alright, so the, the Byzantine Emperor has won his war. Was this a rebellion? Yeah, I feel like she was rebelling against him. Let me just take a look here. Yeah, a war against the tyranny. And our old foe has been taken prisoner, so I'm guessing he was involved in that conflict in some way. Maybe not. Looks like he was in a different conflict. We need to get his territory conquered because it looks like he might be losing. Yeah, he lost this province here to this ruler who I actually wanted to attack, so now he just got more powerful. We do have the prestige. If we wanted to declare war immediately, we could go ahead and attack him with the help of our ally. And we just make sure he's not involved in any other conflicts at the moment. He's not. He does have some additional alliances now, by the way. But yeah, we could pull him in and do this war here to further expand our territory. But I feel like it makes more sense to wait until we've got a son old enough to actually get some titles. So let's go and wait. And let's, let's, let's make a little bit more progress as well. Spend our money on other things too. We could do like activities and stuff. We would need to earn a little bit more here though. Increase popular opinion there. Because they are enthusiastic about converting. But yeah, we could do some activities. And also, we just talked about increasing the size of our men at arms. So let's, let's go ahead and do that. Let's make these guys a little bit larger here. And, you know, I want to get them up to 500 as well. So we'll do that. Of course, that really dips into our, our income. Uh, the schooling in mosques got us 2 plus learning for Ahmed. And we also got a diplomacy lifestyle perk. So this is the befriend scheme power being increased. So next is the friendly council. That one's really nice because each of your friend relations gives you two random skill points. And we have two friends as of right now. Though the Sultan's getting a little old here. Of course, we kind of want him to die because uh, I'm interested to see if they end up having some type of succession crisis. It's hard to say. A lot of his sons have already died as well. Yeah, one died under mysterious circumstances, another was murdered. I don't know if these are rivalries within the family or. What's going on there? But yeah, he's still got plenty of heirs to spare. He's had ten children total. So yeah, he's not uh, he's not out of uh, heirs just yet. Did increase our holding taxes there. As I discussed some court affairs with my son Arslan, he abruptly starts discussing his childhood. Father, you cared for me like the hound binds its pups. Better even. My earliest fondest memories were with you. When I took my first steps, when I placed my first fallen tooth in your hand, when I played mischief and capered around, you held me so close. He blushes, beaming. I love you, father. How sweet. So we say, I love you, son. He gains the trait, the trait loyal. We say, such devotion. We will turn our weak hook into a strong hook or dwell not on the past. Ah, we're going to go with this. And so he will be a, 
a loyal son. So just take a look at Arslan here. And that would apply to his brother as well. When he becomes the liege. And does he have two titles here? Oh yeah, apparently he also has that barony there. And House Unity has decreased. Apparently he's decreased relations with his grandson. It seems like the compassionate son of ours has caused problems with everybody, including himself. He's becoming a little bit of an issue. I just gave him titles too. And it's probably not going to impact House Unity too much. Again, it's very high and it's going up, so it's not that big of a deal, but it's a shame that he's causing troubles within our house. So again, we got this event, and again, it's between Issa and Manu. What the hell? I thought these guys were friends now. What the hell? I don't know. What is going on there, guys? Well, we did get the wooden barracks constructed. Uh, let me just take a look at what our council's doing. Because, yeah, we might not be increasing control everywhere we should. Yeah, because we got this territory we still need to work on here. Um, so let's go ahead and do it over here next. And then I guess we can do it here. Because that control is still low in all these areas. So we should be working on that. We'll continue to just disrupt schemes and increase development in the capital. Really working on the long term here. Uh, already have development up to 19. So that's pretty good. So the Amber just increased his territory, gaining this county over here. And we've heard a strange noise. I arrive back at my castle after a long, lonely walk. Another year passed, another year older. I was born this day 58 years ago. The older I get, the more I cherish the relationships I've cultivated over the years. So it saddens me that I've not heard from my wife, Seafree, or any of my friends today. I trudge along to my chambers, loneliness impeding my lazy feet when I hear a clang and hush whispers from down the hallway. So this is where you get that, that party. Okay, well, we'll have to take a look at that in the next episode, because unfortunately this one is over. Gained a lot of territory in today's video. Had some different events with our, our sons. And we're getting older, guys. We're 58 years old currently. So it's only a matter of time, although we're, we're pretty healthy. But it's only a matter of time before we come in our next character, who is going to already be fairly old by the time we take over as him at 39. And his eldest son is also going to be pretty old by the time we take over as him. And he's intelligent and a novice physician. Overall, he seems to develop very well. Temperate, honest, and diligent. Yeah, just a fantastic character. Look at that uh, stewardship. Okay, well, that's interesting. We'll have to see if we ever get to become him, though, because he's already so old at this point. Does he have a marriage yet? He doesn't. We can always arrange something for him. We'll take a look at all that next episode. So I hope you guys did enjoy this one. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. I do hope to see you on the next one, and thanks for watching.